Hi everybody, beautiful day here in Santa Barbara. I just wanted to pop in and show you a little recipe for making veggie stock. It is super, super easy, really delicious, and makes all of your soup recipes so much better. Um, there's a lot of recipes um, with this program that you can use the soup stock for. And what I recommend is making a big batch and then storing it in mason jars and putting it in your freezer for later. Um, it's also really good prep ahead for your meals. So what I've done is I've started with um, four different root vegetables. I have my um, big stock pot um, that is um, on medium heat. I'm gonna put about two tablespoons of oil uh, in the bottom of the pan. So it's already warm, so um, the olive oil will heat up really quickly. Um, let me turn just a little bit so you guys can see this stock pot as well. So um, as soon as this warms up, I'm gonna start loading all my vegetables in and we'll brown the vegetables for between five and seven minutes. And as soon as they're brown and you can kind of smell the really nice and fragrant smell, then what we'll do is we'll put in the spices. I, mean, I don't use too many, I like to keep it pretty simple. Um, we'll put in salt, um, stir it around for about a minute, and then we'll add the water. So um, the oil is already heated up, so I'm gonna go ahead and load the veggies in. It doesn't matter what order. Um, I really coarsely chopped these veggies because you're gonna end up um, straining them out anyway because um, this recipe takes a few hours. Um, the prep time is, is super simple. The cook time is a little bit longer. Um, in general, I use three to four different vegetables depending on what I have in the refrigerator, uh, depending on what's in season. Um, it's typical to use onion for a recipe such as this. I don't, uh, simply because my husband doesn't tolerate onions very well. So um, so I choose to, to, to take those out, but I actually do use a little bit of onion powder, which uh, he does tolerate. So um, the vegetables are starting to cook and I will, um, I'll just kind of keep stirring them and keep stirring them because I wanna make sure that everything gets browned. Um, it's really important that um, you bring out the flavor before you add the water. You start to cook everything so you, you have that really good deep, deep flavor um, as your stock. Um, the nice thing about homemade stocks is that you don't have all the salt that's added to um, typical store-bought stocks. Um, you can add as much or as little as you want. I generally don't add too much because there's so much more flavor um, with all of the different vegetables that we have that you just don't really need it. Um, and you know, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter what you choose. If you want to make kind of an Italian style stock, you can throw some oregano in, you can throw some rosemary, some thyme, which is really quite lovely. Um, I always put bay leaves, uh, in my stock because I feel like it, it just brings everything together and kind of balances out the, the flavor. You guys can probably hear the, the veggies are really starting to cook now. I have it on higher heat just for demonstration purposes, but typically I would have it on like a medium uh, to medium high heat. Um, but I wanted to make sure to, to get through this whole recipe um, with you guys before we uh, log off. Uh, one of the things that I wanted to talk to you about while this was uh, kind of marinating is um, your make-ahead recipes for the week. So um, there are a few days where you actually have roasted vegetables on your menu. Um, day eight and nine, um, you have roasted vegetables as well as roasted beets and asparagus. So what I generally recommend is doing all of those ahead of time and super easy to do. You get your vegetables um, all chopped up and you want to you want to chop them um, better than you do with the coarse vegetables because you're actually going to use these in the recipe and not um, prep them prior, cut them prior. So um, you want to slice the beets relatively thin. Um, if you're using 
um, winter squash or zucchini squash or onion. Um, you want to slice those, um, you know, a good half, uh, quarter inch or so. Um, and when you um, make sure you cut everything up, I just toss it with a little bit of olive oil, a little bit of salt, um, pepper if you're not doing um, the, uh, the avoidance of nightshade. And then you would put them in your oven on about 400 degrees and let them cook for about 20 minutes. Now I let mine cook a little bit longer because I like them a little bit crispy. And so when I go to heat them up later in the week, they'll just have a little bit more texture to them instead of being uh, a little soggier. Um, but they seem to, to work really well. And you can store them, you know, five days or so, really. And they keep really well. If you're not following a, a particular program, then roasted veggies are great to have in your refrigerator just as a prep ahead uh, for your wheat because you can put them on top of pasta, you can put them on top of salads, you can make a sandwich out of them, um, you can throw them in um, stock um, for a really good soup um, with, you know, if, you, if you're eating um, regular pasta or gluten-free pasta, you can make a nice you know, kind of chicken soup if you if you would like. So veggies, roasted veggies ahead of time can be really, um, really meaningful to your refrigerator, especially if you're under time constraints. So these vegetables are starting to get really fragrant. Um, they, the, the, you know, as soon as you're kind of into the uh, cooking process, they start to brown a bit and start to get more tender and so you can you can smell them and they just they smell absolutely wonderful. So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna brown them too long today, although sometimes I brown them more um, than others, just depending on um, how much time I have really and uh, how coarse I chop the vegetables. But what what you wanna do next is really important. You want to add the spices that you're going to add and then let them cook for about a minute. So you're basically doing what you're doing with the vegetables. You're helping to bring out that flavor of the spice with the heat before you add the water. So I'm going to start with organic onion powder and I'm going to be pretty generous with this. So I'm going to, um, I'm going to put in about two tablespoons just so we have that nice onion flavor. Uh, I'm going to add some uh, pink Himalayan sea salt, uh, which I love and it's kind of my salt that I use all the time. I either use this or I use a, um, like a flake sea salt. Um, so I'm going to do about the same. I'm going to do about two tablespoons, which is much, much less than you would normally get um, in a box or a canned stock. And then I'm just going to add my bay leaves. I'm going to put three bay leaves in just on top. And then I'm going to stir it all up. I'm going to give it, you know, a good minute um, for all of those nice spices to start getting heat on them. Um, the vegetables are smelling even more lovely as I stir. Um, everything is kind of coming together. And basically what you're going to do is you're going to add in a good either distilled or spring water after this. So um, generally for patients, I recommend that they do a spring water for their drinking water because if they're doing a reverse osmosis water, all of your minerals are basically taken out without filtration system. So what you want to do is you want to have a good water base, either distilled or spring. It doesn't matter so much because the vegetables would, will instill so many minerals into your stock that um, even if it's reverse osmosis of water, it really won't matter because you're going to have so many minerals in the skin. Um, so it's been about a minute now, um, and everything starts to look really delicious and smell really good. I'm going to add in my water. I have in my nice little candy container here. And what I do is I just, I cover the vegetables at first. You can see everything kind of calming down. And then I let it come to a boil and then I turn it down to a simmer. 
and I'm gonna let it simmer just for several hours. And as the water uh, comes down in the pot, I will fill the water back up to almost, um, almost to the top, probably about this much to the top. Um, it shouldn't boil over because you're gonna have it on such low simmer. And then I let that happen about three times. So I let everything kind of um, come together and um, condensation to burn off and let everything concentrate um, about three times. And then after that, I strain all of the vegetables out and I put them in mason jars. I make sure to leave about this much room in the big mason jar, um, let them cool absolutely completely before I put the lid on. And then I put the lid on, label it, and put them in my freezer or you put one aside to use for the day. So, um, so that's my stock recipe. You can add um, a chicken carcass to it if you wanted to make chicken stock. Um, you can add um, fish carcasses if you want to make fish stock. You can add um, beef bones if you wanted to make more of a bone broth style. Um, it's really versatile, it's super easy, and it adds so much flavor and goodness and minerals and vitamins to your stock that um, you'll really be amazed the next time you make a delicious soup. So day 13, you do have a, a lovely soup that you can use this with. I, as I said, I would just go ahead and, and make some between now and the start of the program so that you have it in your freezer and you can access it anytime. So thanks for joining in. We'll talk soon. Take care.